I'm doing some modifications to my Benjamin 392 air rifle and while I have the thing apart one of the things I wanted to do is what's known as the two spring mod which makes it pump more efficiently makes it easier to pump the rifle uh, and you'll find this mentioned all over the place on the internet on air gun forums but it's been really difficult to find any kind of uh, hard information on what exactly you do so I've finally kind of gotten things sort of figured out here as far as what you do so I thought I would share it and this will be pretty much the best explanation of this on the internet pretty much regardless of how bad it might be because it's been pretty hard to find information on this so this is the valve out of the gun and this lug here goes through the bottom of the air tube and screws into the valve which holds the valve in place your stock screw threads into the other end of that lug and holds the gun in the stock when you shoot it the hammer hits this little poppet valve there which opens that up lets the air out through the exhaust port shoots the pellet on the other end of the valve when you pump the gun the pump cup comes down forces air through that hole when it does it has to force this little check valve open to let the air in and then the spring pressure closes it you have the spring which goes all the way through the valve pushes on the poppet on the one end and pushes on the check valve on the other end and keeps the air in the valve uh, now the thing is the way these valves used to be made is there were two springs in there you have a fairly stout spring for the poppet and a lighter spring on this check valve and what they have done to make this thing easier to manufacture is they've replaced that with just one spring which goes all the way through and puts an equal amount of pressure on each part of the valve here and while it's easier to manufacture it makes it harder to pump the gun the necessary because when you force the air into the valve you have to overcome all of the spring pressure but you can do the two spring mod which replaces that one spring with two springs and the way you do that luckily the way this valve is made on the inside of it it's still kind of like the old one so you can make this work so you need inside of here and it looks totally dark in there on a the viewfinder so I don't know if it's visible but I'll shine a flashlight in there you can see there's a little step inside of there around the outside just a little bit above that little white check valve piece so you put you would put your uh, your lighter spring in there for that check valve in there first and then a little washer goes inside of there and sits right on that step and then the stronger spring that goes in there is on that washer so the stronger spring is not pushing on the check valve the check valve has a lighter spring uh, to hold that closed so what exactly you need for parts uh, that was one of the things that was difficult to find out I finally found at least an answer on the washer from a guy on YouTube by the name of Possum Living uh, he has a lot of really good air gun videos with a lot of information and this is a well the ones that he said to use were a 10S washer I believe and if I was going to buy one I would use brass but luckily I was able to just find one in my junk um, it fits it's a little steel washer the outside diameter is 
7 sixteenths of an inch and the inside diameter of the hole is about 0.2 inches. It's a hair under a quarter. The hole doesn't really matter. In fact, you don't even actually need to have a hole in it. It only matters to the extent that, that you don't want it so big that any of your springs go through the hole. Um, so that's the washer anyways. Uh, any kind of little metal disc that's 7 sixteenths in diameter will work. Or you could look for one of those 10S washers. I'm not an expert on the sizes and designations of washers, so whatever you get, just at least make sure it's uh, 7 sixteenths in diameter. I don't know if some of them say half inch. I don't know if, I don't think half inch would fit in there. I think you need 7 sixteenths. Now the springs, I've still not found any specific answers on, you know, le length and size and diameters of whatever of springs to look for if you were going to buy one. Uh, what Possum Living did is he just got a, bought a spring assortment and found springs in there that worked. But I think that you can get by with springs that just come on the gun. So I think you can get by with the, the original spring out of the valve with some modifications and then for the other lighter spring I believe you can use this little coil spring that's behind the trigger in here which I don't think is really necessary. I don't believe it really does anything except make the trigger pull a little bit heavier. Uh, you can pop that out of there being careful it doesn't launch across the shop and I think there's I think just that sear spring is more than enough to put enough uh, tension on that trigger to, you know, so the trigger isn't flopping around loose in there. I'm not even putting the full amount of tension on the sear spring. And uh, I'm going to do a considerable amount of modification to this as well. In fact, my big uh, thing that I'm really excited to do with this gun is totally remove this ugly trigger guard and cross bolt safety and make a new trigger guard out of brass that's closer to the shape of the original Sheridan rifles and grind some off the top of this trigger which will allow the gun to be decocked which then that will be the safety um, and I can finagle a little thing here which will hold this leg of the sear spring which I'll cut short so it isn't going through there So this will go in here, and then the spring, and then the washer, and then this spring, and then screw it all back together. Uh, but the thing is, I'm going to have to clip a few coils off of both of these springs, I think. And that's the thing that I'm a little bit worried about screwing up. Although, it's not that big of a deal, since you can buy a complete new brass valve for about 30 bucks so theoretically that's the maximum amount of damage I can do if I really screw this up but still I'd rather not screw it up so I'll try cutting some off of these springs and see how it does there's not very much space in there between the bottom of that little check valve piece and where the washer sits. And also, you know, like I say, I don't know exactly what springs you would buy if you were going to buy springs. The tricky thing is getting enough tension on there. I mean, you want to make the, that first spring light enough so that it significantly makes it easier to pump, but if it's too light, it won't hold air in. And on the other end, if this spring is too light, then the problem that could cause is when you shoot it, it won't dump the entire charge of air. But I think I'll just wing it here and see if I can get it to work. So there's only about a quarter of an inch between the top of that little white piece and where the washer sits. So, 
definitely want to have some compression to that spring but not too much uh, fingers crossed here we go oh okay that's a little harder than I thought So that has now reduced somewhat over a quarter of an inch from the amount of space that this spring has. So I guess I'll try to take off about that much off of this one. Now it's going to be tricky because my wire cutters could barely snip that little spring. And this is considerably heavier. I might have to get out the angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Okay, took that one down with just an angle grinder. Kind of wished I had measured it first, but that original spring out of the valve is now about one and seven eighths inches long. So now we will see if I can get this stuff all back in here. Okay, so whoop would help if it was on camera. So, the lighter spring and the washer are already in there. We'll put this in. Unfortunately, we have these ugly ends on the springs now, so I'm trying to put them in there in such a way that the ends of the springs won't end up poking through a hole in the washer. And looks like it's going together all right. There it is, all tightened up. I don't think it's really necessary to try to screw it down much tighter than that. So, the pop it still works. Still feels like it's got a considerable amount of tension on it. So, I'll see if I can get this gun back together again and see if it pumps easier than it used to. So, taking that spring out of the trigger group actually did improve the trigger pull noticeably. It's a little lighter. However, bad news there, uh, it did have a function. I find that I now have to push the trigger forward a little bit to uh, get the bolt to turn. So, I'm sure I can figure out some kind of a solution to that eventually. But, uh, you know, it wasn't loose this way when, uh, when it was all taken apart, but when it's, everything is all put together, something in there changes so that the trigger is kind of slack. So, I can definitely figure that out. You know, I'll probably get some little springs somewhere. But, let me see here. I will even open the bolt to take pressure off of that poppet valve. And okay, now it's holding air, and it is easier to pump. However, I thought I heard it leaking air at first. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's leaking a little bit out of the muzzle, which what would that be? Not enough pressure on that poppet valve, I think. However, let's do another pump. At two pumps, I don't hear any leaking because the air pressure is holding it. Okay, that was eight, actually maybe nine pumps. Definitely way easier 
made a huge difference in that. Question is, is it leaking? And I can't hear it leaking anywhere. So, is this good? So, the spring pressure in this thing, mainly on that poppet valve, I think the stronger spring, is apparently a little too light. Well, maybe not really, but kind of a little lighter than it should be because it's leaking on that first pump. Oh, I didn't cock it. Wow, that's loud in here. Let's just try this again. Okay, this time I did one pump and I don't hear it leaking. Sorry for the bad camera angle here. There's only so much I can do with this camera. One pump, no leaks. You know what? I think it worked. I think that initial leaking was maybe not enough lubrication in there or something. I don't know. Maybe things are just seating in there better now. Maybe I shouldn't have taken quite as much off of those springs. But I think it works. I think that's how you do a Benjamin 392 two-spring mod.